Welcome to this YSL tutorial. In this session we're going to teach you a little bit about how to perform calculations with text in Microsoft SQL Server. What we'll cover in this session is everything to do with working with text in queries. We'll start by looking at how to concatenate strings of text or build longer sentences with small bits of text. We'll show you a couple of the pitfalls of trying to concatenate text with numbers. We'll then move on and introduce you to some of the most commonly used text functions and finally show you how you can use some of those functions to separate a long string of text into separate component parts. So let's get started. When you're working in a properly designed database, you tend to find that long strings of text get separated into their component parts. So for example in this one we've got the, the person's full name separated into a title, first name and last name. You see the same thing with addresses, address line 1, address line 2, etc. So a common requirement when working with text in SQL Server is to join together bits of text or concatenate them. And to do that is really straightforward. If I want to join together somebody's title with a space and their first name and another space and their last name, it really is as simple as that. You use the plus symbol to join on literal strings of text with another field name and another literal string and another field name. And when I execute the query, I get somebody's full name into a single cell. When you start trying to concatenate text with other data types, things get a little bit more tricky. So in this example, I have a field containing text, film name, and a field containing numerical data, film Oscar wins. And I'd like to build a sentence that says, for example, Jurassic Park won three Oscars. So let's get started by concatenating the film name field with the word, the literal string one. At this stage, if I execute the query, everything works perfectly happily. But as soon as I try to concatenate a field containing numerical data, film Oscar wins. If I execute this query now, I'm going to get an error message. It's a slightly strange one. It says that it's trying to convert the phrase Jurassic Park 1 into a, the data type int or integer. What I really want to happen, of course, is for the film Oscar wins integer to be converted into uh, varchar data. But in order to make that work, I have to be explicit. I have to use one of two functions, either cast or convert. I'm going to show you the cast function quickly first. The cast function has technically only one argument, but it's quite a, quite a long-winded one. You cast a piece of data, or a field name, as a different data type. In this case, it's going to be varchar, and I'm going to use uh, two. Two is the maximum number of digits for the film Oscar wins field. So I know that the, the maximum Oscar wins of any film in my database is, I believe, 11. So that has two digits in it. So if I've used the cast function like so, when I execute the query now, try that again, when I execute the query now, I can happily concatenate a number. But it's a bit frustrating that you have to do that, and this is the way that it works. The alternative now would be to use the convert function. If I can just quickly show you how the convert function works as well. Uh, it's really a case of picking which one you prefer. Convert technically has, uh, has two, well technically three arguments, but we only need to use two at this point. The first argument is the data type you want to use or the data type you want to get. And the second argument is what you want to convert into that data type. So in our case, film Oscar wins. There's not much in it in terms of using cast or convert. The end result is exactly the same. Jurassic Park 1, 3, Jurassic Park 1, 3. So it really is a case of personal preference as to which of these functions you prefer to use. Sometimes in a database, rather than putting pieces of text together into a larger sentence, you may well want to split one larger piece of text into its separate parts. So for example, in this particularly badly designed database. Somebody decided to put the full name of an actor into a single field. So we have Tom Cruise and Sam Neill, etc. What might be useful would be to separate out the actor's first name from their last name. And we can do that using a series of functions, some of the string functions in SQL Server. So if you've watched one of our previous videos, you'll know that you can see all of the available functions in a database by expanding the database in the Object Explorer, expanding the Programmability folder, 
expanding the functions folder within there, nearly there, then the system functions folder in there, and finally the string functions, which are all the functions to do with, con uh, with calculations with text. So we're going to use a couple of the functions from this list. You can get extra help and information on these functions using the built-in help system, so for future reference you can find the list of arguments or parameters required, you can hover the mouse over the function name to see what it's supposed to do, etc. etc. But I'm just going to show you a few of the specific functions to make this technique work. So let's start by trying to calculate the actor's first name. In order to do that we're going to use the function called left and if I hover the mouse over the left function it says it returns the leftmost specified number of characters from a character expression. So basically what that means is if I use the left function to create a new calculator column I want to get letters or characters from the left of the actor name and the number of characters that I want to get. Uh, for instance let's just say three for the sake of argument. So the two arguments of the left function, the string of text you're looking at, and how many characters you want to get from the left of it. If I execute that query, I'll see the first three letters of each person's name, which actually works perfectly for Tom and Sam. Not so well for Laura and Jeff there. So the next step in this sequence is to work out how we can calculate how many letters there are in a person's first name. The technique that we're going to use to do that is to work out where the space is in somebody's full name. Every string of text, uh, every character in it has a, has, a, has a positional number, so the T in Tom is, is number 1, and the O is 2, and the M is 3, and the space is number 4. And the same is true for every separate string of text. So there's a function that will tell you the position of one character in a longer string of text. And the function in SQL Server is called char index. We'll hover the mouse over this one. It says it returns the starting position of the specified expression in a character string. So just to isolate the char index function to show you its, uh, its job in isolation, the first thing I need to tell the char index function is what string of text I'm looking for. And the second thing I need to say is what string of text I'm looking in. If I execute that query now, you should find that for Tom and Sam, the space is at position number four, and for Laura is at position number six, Jeff at number five, etc. So I know that if I could subtract one from the answer that char index gives me, that basically tells me how many letters there are in a person's full name. So the last step is to join those two separate functions together. I might need a little bit more space to do this. So I can copy this first line, the left function, and then copy the function that calculates the number of letters in a person's first name, and simply replace the number 3 with that longer number. I can actually now get rid of these first two columns, I don't need to see those. And if I execute the query, I'll get everybody's first name regardless of, regardless of length. So the next step is to calculate the actor's last name. And that requires a slightly different technique, but still using some of the text functions. If I introduce you to the right function, you could probably work out fairly easily how that works based on the way the left function works. If I say actor name, comma, let's say six, our first example, when I execute this query, it gives me the six rightmost characters from the actor's name. So it works perfectly for, for Tom Cruise, it gives me Tom Cruise's surname, but not so well for any of our other actors. So what we need to do, again, as we did with the left function, is we need to replace this number with uh, an expression which calculates how many letters there are in an actor's name. We're actually going to use two functions to do this. First of all, the len function. Len simply tells you how many characters there are in a string. If I execute that query, Tom Cruise has 10 letters in his name. If I subtract from the total length,
the position of the space in the actor's name. When I execute this query, that basically tells me how many letters there are in an actor's surname. So the last step, once again, is to combine. Excuse me. Is to combine the first function using write, but replace the number six with our expression, which calculates the number of letters in the surname. If I can just make my screen a bit wider so you can see the the full result, and I can get rid of those separate columns that I was using to, to demonstrate the principles. So give me letters from the right of actor's name and the number of letters that I want to get is equal to the length of the actor's name minus the position of the space in the actor's name. It's a bit long-winded admittedly but if I execute that query now we've got two separate columns one for first name and one for last name. As a final flourish, we could now put back together the first name and last name, but in a different order. So we can use concatenation to join to the end of a person's last name, perhaps a comma and a space, plus the calculation for their first name. If I get rid of any extra commas there, and finally execute this query, you can see that we've effectively reversed the name, which means we can now change the order of our, our results. If I give this a quick alias, and add in an order by clause, we can see our actors listed alphabetically by surname. If you've enjoyed this training video, you can find many more online training resources at www.wiseowl.co.uk.